Greetings to you all. Welcome to our live Word of Rick Wednesday midweek service program. My name is Pastor Andrew Sidney Mutondoro, uh, the senior pastor of Oasis Christian Assembly with headquarters in Johannesburg, South Africa. Let us uh, pray. Let's get ready to hear what the Lord has for us. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for you always do your word. We thank you that you're reliable and you're faithful and you never fail us at all. We thank you that there's nothing impossible with you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that indeed you've delivered us from the clutches of Satan. We thank you that your word is true all the time. We thank you that our hearts are opened, ready to hear the word, ready to welcome the word, ready to understand the word and do it without delay, knowing fully well that you're more interested in our success than it would ever be. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. This is part three of, in the series, My Yoke is Light. And our main theme verse is Matthew chapter 11, verse 30. And it's on your screens right now. Matthew chapter 11, verse 30. And this is Jesus talking. He said, my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, hard, sharp, oppressing, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be born. And this, we've taught you in the other two episodes. Understand that the yoke of Jesus is the vision that God had for him for his life. And that burden is light and easy for him because he's flowing. He's, everything that he did was to do the will of the Father. Hallelujah. And um, he did it by the power of the Holy Spirit working in him and among the people. Hallelujah. Very important. And we see from Scripture, Matthew chapter 11, verse 30. Matthew chapter 11, verse 30. Sorry, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. They lead up into verse 30. So go to Matthew 11, verse 28. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I'll cause you to rest. I'll ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Next, 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart, and you'll find rest, relief, and ease, and refreshment, and recreation, and blessed quiet for your souls. It says, take my yoke. So Jesus' yoke, Jesus' vision, vision is yours too. Jesus was the Savior. We are saviors in Christ too. We are to win, build, and send souls. So you've got to ask yourself, everything that you do, does it add value to winning souls, to building souls, to sending souls? When you win souls, it's not enough to just get them born again. You must get them to be planted in a ministry. And if you remember OSC Assembly, get them planted in OSC Assembly so that they are trained and taught to become effective. Some people say, I'm winning souls, but we don't want to come to church. No, no, no. You win them to be planted in the church so they can be trained, become disciples, and also send to win souls. Very important. So ask yourself, whatever you do, the studies, how do they, how do they help to win souls? The business, how does it help to win souls? Your family, your children, everything with you, how does it help to win souls? The time, how does it help to win souls? Your job, how does it help to win souls? Very important. So you must look at those matters. And so then you go to Matthew 11, verse 30. For my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, hard, sharp, oppressing, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be born. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. As Jesus is, so are we. Jesus' yoke was light. My yoke is light. Your yoke is light as well in Christ. Hallelujah. So we learned some powerful things. We said we're starting in the Old Testament. So we're just going there. Uh, we, we, last week, we went to the book of Judges chapter 4. And um, we'll just go there. Judges chapter 4 from verse 1. I'll just read. We, we finished off on verse 5 last week. And I'll just read that, hallelujah. Judge chapter 4, verse 1. But after Ehud died, the Israelites again did evil in the sight of the Lord. Next, Judge 4, verse 2. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who got in Harosheth Hagoyim, fortress or city of the nations. Judge 4, verse 3. Then the Israelites cried to the Lord 
for Jabin had 900 chariots of iron and had severely oppressed Israelites for 20 years. They were in oppression and suffered for 20 years. Why? They went against God's vision for them. But thank God they cried out there. They cried out there to the last time is the Hebrew word Zach to pray to the Lord. Not just to cry tears, no, to pray to the Lord, to assemble together, to call to the Lord, to worship God, to hear from God, and God responds with answers, right? Next, so the Judges chapter 4, verse 4. Now we spent a lot of time on here last week, made it very clear that look, your yoke is light. Now, Judges chapter 4, verse 4. Now, Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Labidoth, judged Israel at that time. And said it was very clear. Look, she was a prophetess. She was in the office of a prophetess. And she was, she means her relationship with God was right. The vertical relationship that you have in life is the relationship with God. How is your relationship with God? Very important. When you get born again, you start your vertical relationship with God. But it must grow. And the word of God reveals things you're supposed to do. Key among them, submitting to God's order, to God's structures. If you go against God's structures, you will not win. You will be wounded and you become a failure in life sooner or later and suffer premature death. So Deborah was a prophetess. She functioned well as a prophetess. Number two, she was the wife of Lapidoth. She functioned well as the wife of Lapidoth. You see, her functioning in the office of a prophetess did not make her the boss of her husband, Lapidoth. She functioned well as a wife of Lapidoth. She played a part to create an environment in her marriage that was conducive to have joy in that marriage and to allow her to function as a prophetess. Lapidoth, likewise, was a wonderful husband. He created an environment for his wife to shine. He was not jealous. He knew who he was, hallelujah. He functioned. He helps he create an environment. You see, husband and wife must play their part to create an environment that is conducive to what? To make sure that your relationship with God is right. If you do anything that pollutes the environment in the home, the spiritual environment in the home, your relationship with God cannot be right. We need to understand that. You cannot go against God's word. You cannot live in sin and say, I'm right with God. You can't. That's just the word. So if you're in sin, come to a position of confession and repentance. Only Satan is glorified when Christians do things like separation and divorce. It's not of God. It's not of God. It's a result of selfishness. It's a result of Pride. Humble yourselves. Humble yourselves. Function in love, which is opposite of selfishness. You cannot say with God, there's nothing impossible with God. Believe in the impossible for your marriage. Believe in the possible for your home. Believe in the possible for your children. Believe in the possible for God's in the impossible for God's church. For it, what's impossible with man is possible with God. God can turn around every situation as long as it advances his, 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 his kingdom. Hallelujah. So we see there, very important, she finds the wife of Labidoth, and she helped create the environment, the important, she was humble. She also judged Israel. Now you see there, very important, that uh, that's a secular work. And she allowed her gifting as a prophetess to help her in a secular work. See, as a judge. Very important. The gift that God has given you, let it have impact in the entire world. You see, I'm a pastor and I'm preaching and teaching you right now. I must first and foremost be a pastor in my home. My wife must know me as a pastor. My children must know me as a pastor. Those that work for me must know me as a pastor. Not a pastor in word, but a pastor in deed. So I ask the Holy Spirit to help me to get better. Very important. Now, so... You see the versatility of Deborah. Very important. She's functioning as a prophetess, functioning as a wife, functioning as a judge. Awesome. When your relationship with this God is right, everything else will fall into place. I assure you. Learn. Your yoke will be light. Look at the demands on Deborah's time, Deborah's resources. How did she do it? Her relationship with God was right. 
get your relationship with God right. Do the word. Be humble. See, Elizabeth God was right, and she cared about the needs of the other people, the needs in her family. And she cared about the needs of people outside of her family. The, what is it? The children of Israel she judged. See, some people, all they're concerned about is themselves or their family. End of story. No, it's not right. Be concerned about the needs of other people beyond your family, beyond yourself. Be concerned. It's very important. Don't be selfish. Be concerned. They go Judges chapter 4, verse 5. So let's see again. Very clearly says, now she, she four verse five, Judges 4 verse 5 says, She sat under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim and the Israelites came up to her for judgment. Very important for a yoke to be light. She's a prophetess. Yes, but notice here, she was not an undercover prophetess. She operated out of cover in the open. She was known. Her office was public. The location was public. Her office for being a prophet was the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the new country. It was very clear. People came to her in the open. You see, you've got to be very careful. Those that want to do, if you study the Bible from Genesis all the way to, uh, to Revelation, true prophets of God, true prophets tests of God, they were not undercover. They were in the open. It was known where they operated from. It was very clear. Even Jesus was not undercover. It was known wherever he went, where he operated from. It was very clear. Very clear. See, you've got to be careful these days. There's a new breed. No, it's not really new, but it's, the Bible. it's been there in terms of Jesus and from before. See, fake prophets, fake prophets, they want to do things undercover, under darkness. And let me tell you, they are, if the fact that they are fake, what is behind them? Lying spirits. And I told you last week, Wednesday, very clear. Satan can do miracles. <laughs> you can be prophesy, fake prophets can prophesy lie over you. Things that will come to pass, but they are not of God. Sooner or later, you discover the consequence of such things. That was clear that true prophets comes to encourage, to build up, to exhort, to comfort. Hallelujah. Very important. Now, you've got to be very careful. Some people, when they are in sin, they will reject the word of God. They will reject prophetic word. But the humble will receive it, confess and repent, and be used by God. We've got the great example of King David, a man of God, a king. He did adultery. He was guilty of conspiracy to murder, absolutely. And God sent Nathan, a prophet, to speak to him. And immediately he confessed and repented. And by the time he died, God said, David was a man after my own heart. His yoke was light. So you've got to understand that it's very important. Very, very important. Humility is very key. Be loving, not selfish. Don't be driven by wanting your advantage. Be driven by wanting to create advantages for other people to mightily advance the kingdom of God. It's very important. So we find it there. And... Um, so, Deborah operated openly and publicly. Very important. Elias came up to her for judgment. Go to verse 6 now. Judges chapter 4, verse 6. And she sent and called Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadesh in Ephtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded you, Go, gather your men at Mount Tabor, taking 10,000 men from the tribes of Nephtali and Zebulun. Now, you've got to understand the construction, the wording of, this pro, of these words that prophetess Deborah is speaking to, to, to Barak. Hallelujah. Barak is the army commander of the army of Israel. And look at the way she says to him, hang on, Barak. But notice here, she sent for Barak. All right? She's operating from a position of openness, a position of openness, the office is known, and she sends for Barak. She summons him. She has the authority to summon him. Why? She's a judge. <laughs> She's a judge in the nation of Israel. So using a secular position, she uses it to summon the commander of the army. See, her yoke is light. She has no difficulty summoning the army commander. You see, if you look at I'm preaching to you 
I live in South Africa. In South Africa, the highest court in South Africa is the Constitutional Court. And there are some ladies in that Constitutional Court who are Constitutional Court judges, the highest court authority in South Africa. And you find there's some ladies there. Small physically. You might even beat them up physically. But guess what? Because they function in the full authority as constitutional court judges, they don't just start as constitutional court judges. They go through a training process, going through training until they are qualified to sit there. And with the COVID system, they know that they have positions. They can summon anybody, including the president of the country. They can summon him to the constitutional court. Very important. Well, in some countries, they can say there's, the president is immune to being summoned, but not all countries. But that lady is a kosher court judge, has the power to summon even the billionaire, even the super serious influential men or women of the society. Her yoke is that she doesn't have to beg. If they don't come, there will be police and sheriffs, whatever, that are sent to go and arrest and bring the person she has summoned. So here we find that. What do you notice about uh, Deborah? She is functioning in the fullest of the authority granted unto her. Brothers and sisters, God gives you the authority you need to function in your position. Exercise it. Use the authority God has given you. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Now, you, in my name, you shall what? You shall what? You shall what? You shall what? You shall cast out devils. Heal the sick. Disciple them. Baptize them. So we function in the, as Christians, we need to understand the authority that we have over Satan and all his demons. We should not be intimidated. Many people are intimidated. Many people live their lives full of fear of Satan and his demons. We are in Christ. Satan is under our feet. <laughs> he's a defeated foe. But even if a, 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 an enemy is defeated, they can still cause havoc if you don't know it. That's why the Bible says, give no room to Satan so that he causes no havoc in your life. So here we find that Deborah, as a prophetess, functions in her authority. She summons the army commander and he comes and she tells him, because she sent for him. She sent authorities to go and call him. And he comes. He says to him, has not the Lord said? Notice here. She is judging the Israel. But her functioning in, in judging Israel is based on God's word. Is based on God's authority. Is based on her knowledge of God. Libra You see, God's word is our final authority. Your yoke is light if you use God's word as your final authority. I don't know what you're going through. Find out from scripture. What does God's word say about this kind of challenge? God's word he has got answers to all challenges you can ever face in life. Even when you are being successful, ask yourself, what does God's word say when you're successful? God's word is clear. You must move from one level of glory to a higher level of glory. You never reach a maximum level of success. You should go higher and higher. Libra Your yoke will be light. Do not be satisfied with being. I have arrived now. There is a higher level. There is a higher level. Ever increasing in grace, ever increasing in glory. Maybe you never thought you could end, you can get you can earn 10,000 rands a month. Now you're earning 10,000. Brother, there's 30. There's 50,000 rands a month. There's 100,000 rands a month. There's 500,000 rands a month. There is 1 million rands a month. I was reading an article about one of the CEO of the companies in South Africa. I think it was Vodacom, one of the largest silver companies in South Africa. His pay for the year, his package for the year was 29.2 million rands. <laughs> for one year <laughs> while others are doing toy toy in the streets ho oh, oh, having strikes and demonstrations over 6% increase over 3,000 rands a month there's a higher level submit to God so you see very clearly there now I'm not saying it's wrong to demonstrate don't misunderstand me it is good to demonstrate in line with God's will but understand this it's better for a Christian to do the word for promotion comes from God there's a higher level let God increase you in grace so that your increment is not dependent on the union negotiations. 
But God's favor, God's grace at work in you. Hallelujah. There's a higher level. Refuse to be limited. Some people live their entire lives believing that the union is their source of all financial increments. What a bad life. What a terrible life. You realize that the higher you go in any organization, they, there is no union to negotiate wages for CEOs. There's no union to negotiate wages for directors. There's no union to negotiate wages for, for shareholders. There's a higher level. God is faithful. He will take from where you are, and if you hearken to his word, he will make you come to a position of promotion. He will consciously raise you up. David became king, but he started off by looking after sheep. But he was faithful to do God's word. He was given responsibility by his father. The word was, look after the sheep. Don't lose any of them. Protect them. What did he do? He a bear came. He killed it. A lion came. He killed it. So he went through a training process that nobody else knew. Libra, shat, As I'm standing here to you, I've gone through some training process that many of you don't even know. And even now, I'm going through some training, some serious training that the Lord has been doing, hallelujah, in my spirit, in, in me, opening my eyes, equipping me for the next level of ministry. Libra, baba, and it's a glorious level. Labaya, ha, ha, it's glorious. It is glorious. Make a glorious. By his spirit, God will raise you from one level of glory to a higher one. So look at the concept of the words there. She speaks to Barak. She says, Barak, Judges 4, verse 6. Has not the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded you, go and gather your men at Mount Tabor, taking 10,000 men from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun? No, she's asking the question. She's a prophetess. She knows that the Lord spoke to Barak. God gave him instructions. Barak. Gather your men at Mount Tabor, taking 10,000 men from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun. He received the instruction. But what happened to him? So the Bible says, says, Barak, didn't God tell you? As I'm preaching right now, what has God told you? Libra, Babaya, Zante, De Boshka, Sata, Dabashka. Some people come to church and say, oh, pastor is preaching me. Pastor is not preaching you. None of you is too important. It's so important that pastor is taught by God to preach you. No, pastor preaches God's word. The word for the now that God has given him. You see the body of the prophetess. She is preaching. She's speaking God's word. She's prophesying. She's speaking God's word for Barak. The word for the now. It's specific. She doesn't plan to say. In this case, she called Barak. It's a one-on-one -on -one meeting. She calls Barak. So there's a word for Barak. And it's direct. When you go into the public meeting, there might be a word, individual. But when you're sitting in the sanctuary, God has words for everybody. The message that pastor is speaking is for everybody. Humble yourself. You know, I was amazed one time, I was in a meeting and somebody gave a comment and said, uh, Pastor has been preaching on this particular subject. Well, I am not, I am not, I am not in sin. I am not living that kind of lifestyle. So the word is not for me. That is stupidity, pride on the rampage. The word that God speaks to the man of God, it doesn't mean you are in sin. If you're not in sin, it's a word to equip you. But with that statement, it means the person can't hear what you are teaching them. And the people that can't hear what the man of God is speaking, you always see that they go contrary. Humble yourselves. Never put you in a servant position and say, the word that's being preached is not for me. You are joking. Because the word that the man of God or the man of God preaches or any man of God preaches is what? Is from God, anointed by the Holy Spirit in line with God's word. As long as it agrees with God's word, it is in line with God's word. Do it. It equips you. Humble yourselves. So here, notice here, there's a word for Barak. Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded you? Gather your men at Mount Tabor. Look at God's specific instructions. At Mount Tabor. Taking 10,000 men from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun. Next verse. Judges 4 verse 7. And I'll draw out Sisera, the great general of Jabin's army. Those are the enemies of the children of Israel. To meet you at the river Kishon with his chariots and his multitude. And I'll deliver him into your hand. So she's asking the commander, you, Barak, you haven't done. God didn't go tell you. I'll bring out your enemies. You see, Barak was afraid. Brothers and sisters, your yoke will not be light if you function in fear. Don't live your life in fear. Live your life by faith. 
For the Bible is clear. Hebrews 11 verse 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is the opposite of fear. Don't live life in fear. Refuse to fear. If you find yourself you're getting afraid, pray in tongues. Meditate on God's word. Hear some glory messages that are sound that build up your faith. Grow your faith. Very important. So, Barak was in fear. God had told him, I will give you the victory. But what happened? He was in fear. So what happened? He did not do what God told him to do. What is the problem there? Procrastination. Not doing what God has told you to do. It's my prayer that for all of us, everyone, every Christian in this world, and all of us in this broadcast, that none of us will ever procrastinate doing what God has told us to do. What God tells you to do, do it without delay. Let us be people that will meet the deadlines of God and do things earlier. Do not procrastinate. Do not be an employee known for never meeting deadlines. You know, in my, in my life, I've come across some people, they never meet deadlines. It doesn't matter how many times they extend, it's never met. I declare in Jesus' name from today, none of you procrastinate. None of us will procrastinate. We'll do God's word without delay. Why? Watch what happens here. And Barak said to her, that's the border, if you go with me, then I'll go. But if you not go with me, I will not go. Can you see? He is so full of fear. What happened? He delayed doing God's instruction. Don't delay to give tithes. Don't delay to go and win souls. Don't delay to confess and repent of your sins. Don't delay to go to church. Be early. Don't delay doing God's word. Your yoke could be heavy. The Bible says, give no room to Satan. Barak had a word from God. Go to Mount Tihor. Assemble 10,000 men from Nephtali and Zebulun. And I will bring your enemy, that powerful enemy, Sisera. I will bring him to you. And you shall have victory. But he looked at the power. He looked at the enemy and said, oh, the enemy's got 900 chariots. He's got so many soldiers, so many ammunition. Oh, we are weak. We are weaker than them. We are less trained than them. You see, the battle is not yours. The battle is God through the Holy Spirit working in you in line with God's vision for your life. Your yoke will be light if you do things, put your trust in God. Deborah was a woman, but here we have, what's happening? The army commander Barak is afraid to go to battle. He says, I cannot go there. Hallelujah. Deborah is not a trained soldier. Deborah does not use a sword. She doesn't carry a She's got no helmet. She is a prophetess. She's a wife of Lapidoth. She's the judge of Israel. But the army commander says, I cannot go. The yoke, the yoke is too heavy. It's too overwhelming. It's too much for me. But guess what? For the woman, it was easy. What was heavy for the trained army commander was easy for the woman. Prophetess Deborah, Lapidoth's wife. Judge Israel. See what happens. Verse 9, Judges chapter 4, verse 9. And she, the brother said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the trip you take will not be for your glory. For the Lord will sell Caesar into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Ha <laughs> ha See the dangers of procrastination. The dangers of not doing what God has told you to do. Doing it immediately. When you delay to confess the repent of sin, Satan makes you go deeper into sin. When you delay in doing God's word, Satan takes, he seizes the opportunity. But here we have prophetess Deborah. And she's speaking to Barak. Barak, you were supposed to. <laughs> Sister was supposed to be brought into the hand, direct, of what? Of Barak. He procrastinated. And he missed out. And God says, a woman. A woman. And there is army commander being led by a woman. But thank God. Barak is an army commander who, sub, who recognizes the anointing of God. He submits to it. He recognizes it and says, Lord, yes, I did not do what I was supposed to do, but your grace is working at this woman of God. That grace will connect to it. Connect to the grace of God that's functioning in line with God's will, in functioning with building, not tearing down. Don't participate in things that tear down, especially the work of God. The woman, Deborah, because her relationship was right with God. Her relationship was right with God. Her relationship was right with her husband. 
Rachel was right in her work as a judge. Rachel was right. She related to the people excellently. She made people's needs in line with God's will, in line with God's structures, in line with God's word. And guess what? She's now leading the army. More grace to her. So now she's now the lead strategist taking the army into battle. Her yoke is light. <laughs> so the army commander said, let's go. She heard from the Spirit of God say, go. She said, okay, we'll go. What did she do? Notice what Barak could not do. Go immediately. In Judges 4 verse 9, the brother said, I'll surely go with you. When? Now. But he says, and Deborah arose. You know, the Barak to Kadesh. She arose. Deborah took the leadership position. The army commander and the soldiers are now following her. Divine favor, divine skill, divine abilities, divine grace is yours. When you do the word of God, the ability is in the instruction. We'll pick it up next week. God bless you. And you can only, if your yoke being light, this was part three in the series. You can have your yoke being light if Jesus is your Lord and Savior. I encourage you to repeat the words on your screen right now and become born again and have Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Say, from today, Jesus is the Lord of my life. He died on the cross, was buried, and resurrected. He is in heaven, but lives in me by the power of the Holy Spirit. With those words, my brothers and sisters, you are born again. I encourage you to attend the nearest Oyster Assembly Church near to you right now. If there is none, I encourage you to attend another Sound Doctrine Church near where you are. If there is still none, we are willing to open an Oyster Assembly branch near where you are. You know, just get in touch with us using our quarter details on our screen and we'll be able to, to help you and we help each other to advance the kingdom of God. You see, our email address is on the screen. Our website address is there. So you can visit and find a way we've got other branches uh, in, in the family of God called OSC Assembly. And the online store is at www.makersworldstore.com. Go there and get downloads of Christian audio and video messages. You'll be mightily blessed. And on that store... The two newest messages there are two series from our recent super successful conference that we held. Number one, one that we did in High Dimensions Conference, Harare, Zimbabwe, in May 2019. There are five audio messages on your on the store, and they're called There is a Way, part one to part five. Invest in them. Each one is 20 rands. And if you buy all four at once, you only pay for four. That is 80 rands. And uh, there's another series of four messages Awesome messages from High Dimensions Conference we held in 2019 in Wittbank, uh, South Africa. What a conference we had there in July. Phenomenal. And there are four audio messages. They're entitled, There is a Path. Parts one to part four. I promise you, there's a big difference between those two messages. There is a way and there is a path. Tremendous truth from God's way to bless you. Invest in them. If you don't have a credit card and can buy online, contact any Oscar Assembly branch and they'll be able to assist you to buy without credit cards. Thank you. God bless you. I'd like to thank all those of you that, that have been partnering with us financially. And I'm going to pray a special blessing for you. God's hand is upon you. Our banking details are on the screen right now. God's hand is upon you. It's a time of supernatural accelerated progress in everything that concerns you. Your future is secure. Improvements, advantages, opportunities are being created for you right now. They are manifesting right now. Blessings are manifesting right now. Your life is upwards and forwards only. You are moving from one level of glory to high level of glory. Make up your mind out your past. Your life is upwards and forwards only in Jesus' name. I encourage you, please join us this coming Sunday. We're going to have a phenomenal time in, in all our Oscar Assembly branches throughout the ministry. And I will personally be at uh, Oscar Assembly branch, Santon branch. It's fantastic. We're going, to, we're going to have a great, great, great time. I'm looking forward to being with you this Sunday. Don't miss it. The address is 348 Angus Crescent. Pastor B will be there with me as well. We're going to have a phenomenal, phenomenal time. And the address is 348 Angus Crescent, Northlands Business Park, New Market Road, North Riding, Johannesburg, South Africa. 
Bring others. It's going to be a phenomenal time. The service from 9 a.m. to 11.30. It will finish on time. You're going to have a great time. God bless you. Let's just share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide in us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. And surely, goodness and mercy are our portion all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. See you next week. Thank you.